morning, good morning. Good morning, my name is Ginger. I'm a priest with the Celtic Christian Church and welcome to Coffee Break Prayer. Today is Wednesday, it's March 10th, 2021. Anyway, um, on Wednesdays, I like to open up to the book of Proverbs and pray practical prayers from Proverbs. If we want to pray with the scriptures, use the scriptures as a jumping off point for conversation with God. I think that Proverbs is one of many places um, in the scriptures, but pretty reliably you can open up Proverbs and start talking with God. And hopefully the Holy Spirit will answer back through the words in your heart, um, meaning in your heart, meaning the biblical meaning of the word heart includes what we might think of as our minds as well as our affections. Like, like you'll get insights or, or neat things might happen during the day to help understand whatever it is you are asking God about. There's a genuine dialogue forming. In other words, when we start to pray, take aside a few moments a day, like coffee break prayer, I think I have my hope and my prayer for you today is that that will overflow into other times of your day and into your whole life. You'll find that as we get used to talking with God and praying, that that prayer overflows because um, God loves us so much and wants to be in relationship with us, right? So Proverbs is a really good way. Like it's sort of, um, if you're getting used to, especially if you're getting used to praying, I don't want to say that because that sounds condescending, and I don't mean it that way. I still look at Proverbs, and I'm like, ah, blows my mind a little bit. Good ways, bad ways, right? Anyway, um, the reason why I say this is that sometimes we want to pray the scriptures. We want to read the Bible, and it doesn't make sense. You don't know what to do about it. Um, you don't necessarily want to commit to a whole Bible study, although, like I say every Wednesday, if you ever get offered a Bible study on Proverbs, join it. It'll be interesting. So it's just a way to begin to riff off the Bible and have this conversation with God. And my hope and my prayer for you is that the dialogue overflows into your whole life. So here we go. Let's begin, as always, in the name of Abba, our Creator, Jesus, our Liberator, and the Spirit who is holy. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come and fill the hearts of your people. Come and help us to take this time aside and set it aside to be with you. And friends, let's take two deep breaths just to help us settle in. I always need at least two because the first one is sort of a reminder that, I don't know, it's sort of a letting go for me. And then the second one helps me settle in. So let's take two breaths together. Thank you, friends. Okay, come Holy Spirit. So let's open up the book of Proverbs. You don't have to if you don't have a Bible nearby. Um, so we're going to look at Proverbs 10 today because today is March 10. There are 31 chapters in Proverbs. And so if you don't know where to start, you just open up to whatever chapter corresponds to the calendar date, right? Why not? It's just a conversation starter. So we open up to chapter 10, and I tell you, as I was reading it this morning, I just, it's one of those chapters that kind of troubles me. Like with Proverbs, you open up a chapter, and there'll be something that challenges me. I'll be like, oh, I really need to live this better, or wow, yeah, help me to work on this. Um, there's stuff that is just utterly incomprehensible to me, like, what? And there's stuff that I want to say, how could you have allowed this to be here? Don't you know how this would be abused over the years to hurt people? These words would be so easily twisted. Um, what's going on here? So, And sometimes all three things happen in one chapter and more. And, of course, chapter 10 is one of those. So, for example, there's this big heresy out there. It's pretty popular, the idea of the prosperity gospel. 
that if you the the quick summation of the heresy is that if you are poor, it's because you deserve it. You've sinned. Your parents have sinned. You're sinners. You deserve it. If you're rich, it's because God it's because God loves you and you're blessed and you're doing everything right. Rich, good people, poor, bad people. This is a huge heresy. And it's amazing that Christians fall for the lie because our Jesus was poor and hung out with poor people and loved them so much. But somehow we get, people can get caught up. And so there's some, um, there's some of that in chapter 10 that can, that can be, um, used as an excuse for that thinking. But he does say, the author of Proverbs, the human author inspired, or this little collection, I personally, I think a lot of it comes from grandmothers who were just like, because I hear my own grandmothers in the background. It's the kind of thing a mother would say to you a lot of this stuff. The lazy hands, lazy hands lead to poverty. Busy hands lead to wealth. Okay, that's verse three. First four, rather. And that that is one of those verses that can be twisted because we know, of course, lots of people who are poor are busting the gut, often almost literally making themselves sick, working hard. So that's not necessarily true. It sounds like something you'd hear from your grandmother, though. But let's look at verse 2. Ill-gotten treasures profit nothing, but virtue saves us from death. Well, that's a nice little antidote there. Ill-gotten treasures profit nothing. So if you're busy at evil stuff and getting rich, then it's not going to do you any good in the long run. So anyhow, here's one that's kind of funny, one of the ones that makes me smile. As vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the lazy person to those who employ him as a messenger. Let me read that again, because now you have the idea. As vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes is the lazy person to those who use him as a messenger. It's like, ah! <laughs> so that that's just, that's another fun one. But the verse I'd like us to pray about today in verse 10 is verse 12. Hatred stirs up disputes, but love covers all offenses. And again, I'd just like to say any and all of these proverbs are, are conversation starters with God. You don't have to immediately agree. You know, the past is a foreign country. People do things differently there, right? So these, these are proverbs from another culture, another time another space and just about and in a lot of ways and so we don't necessarily know why this made so much sense at the time but it's in scripture for a reason for us to think about argue about pray about right so we can talk about these things what i'm saying is even verse 12 which is so beautiful the second part love covers all offenses can be wielded in an unhealthy way like if you love me you won't it won't matter to you that i'm doing this awful thing to you and your kids for example um in a lot of cultures including the one i grew up in unfortunately there was some that was part of misogyny that women would just take things because you're so loving and good so you can do stuff and, and women don't women will be angry and they'll be hurt, but eventually they'll let go because their love covers it all. So we do have to watch out for that bad attitude, right? But yet, this verse, this particular verse is quoted at least three times in the New Testament. It meant a lot to the Christians. Hatred stirs up disputes, but love it covers all offenses. So let's, let's ask God about this. Abba, this is a beautiful, these words are beautiful, and um, I can't wait till my Hebrew is strong enough. I'm learning Hebrew, and I think maybe I will make that verse a verse that I will try to learn. Um, 
It's bubbling. Hatred stirs up dispute. Love covers all offenses. Even in the, even in this English translation, these words got blurred one more. Hatred does this, love does that. Now, Abba, help us to be truly loving. Truly loving and healing people. And all that that means, that if we want to cover the offenses, if we want to smooth things out, it means acknowledging and dealing with the lumpiness, with the ugliness that is there. Help us to, when we see evil, to not be filled with hatred. Please protect us from that hatred. But also to not confuse anger at injustice or hunger for righteousness, the eager to be, see things right. That's not hatred. That's something else. Give us that wisdom as well. And always help us to find true love. The true love that will somehow help cover all offenses so that people will know that they are loved. That they are forgiven. And that we can be together again and come to you together again. So protect us too from those who who would stir up disputes among us. And there are lots of people who just enjoy it. They enjoy stirring up trouble, especially if they themselves don't need to get bloodied. Hatred stirs up disputes. Oh, poking in here and you're poking there and you see what you can stir it up. And then you sit back and watch the sport. Forgive us, Abba. Forgive us and help us to never do this and to recognize when others are trying to do this. And I lift up my own culture in particular. I'm going to be selfish and pray for my own culture today. Here in the 21st century, 2021, United States of America, that we would find wisdom and true love, that we would be shielded from hatred and have the wisdom to recognize hatred when it goes poking around trying to get us to hate each other, stirring up disputes. Help us to love one another, to truly love one another with the humility that's required to say, oh my gosh, I, I am so stupid about this that I don't even understand exactly what I've done, but I can see that it's a terrible thing and I am so sorry and I will do my best to make it better. Like that's part of loving. And it's a very honest thing, especially nowadays. You know, I'm thinking about racism, Lord. I, I don't understand everything I do or say that hurts my friends and they they never confront me on it. So, and it's not their job to do so. <laughs> so I'm not asking them to or asking you to have them do it. I'm just saying, thank you for their love that they continue to befriend me, even though I know as a white woman, I must be doing and saying awful things sometimes. So help us, Lord, to be honest, to find that wisdom within ourselves so that our love will cover offenses, will bring healing and peace and never stir up disputes. There's a lot out there. And uh, sometimes bold action is required, Abba, like with that Gordian nut we prayed about yesterday. So help us to boldly love and to boldly reject hatred. Say, nope, nope, your voice is not worth me listening to. La, 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 whatever it takes. So Abba, I ask your blessing on us all as we seek to live with genuine love and seek to reject hatred in all its poisonous outcomes. So we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And my friend, I ask God's blessing on you. May you be blessed this beautiful day. Be blessed, dear one, in the name of Abba, our Creator, Jesus, our Liberator, and the Spirit who is holy. And I hope that you know that you are loved by God who loves you so much that that love covers all offenses. Be a peace friend and go have a conversation with God. You take care. Bye.